guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 15, titled Hope for Tomorrow. So, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode was a very good episode. I'm actually a day late on posting this video, so hopefully you guys are still interested. There was a lot of stuff that went down, and we have a lot to break down, so definitely stick around for the whole video. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. So at the start of the episode, we have Esme, and she is being adopted, or she's ready, sort of gone through the motions. Well, that being Alex and Kelly, of course, who are adopting Esme. And so Esme is moving into their house, and it seems like everything is going very swimmingly. And it's pretty obvious from the start that this is what they were going to be doing. Last episode set it up. I mean, for years, Alex, since Maggie left, has been wanting a child. So now that it's actually happening, it's very overwhelming for her in this episode. And so it was great to see her go through that. And Aunt Kara is introduced and Grandpa Jean. I love that they mentioned that because, you know, everyone always calls him a space dad. And, like, I think he would be a great kind of granddad figure for Esme and also Aunt Kara, I mean that's cool, you can call her Aunt Supergirl, who wouldn't want an Aunt Supergirl? But anyway, so Esme, actually at this point, because remember she has the power to mimic other people similar to another character on the Flash right now, and so yeah, she mimics Jean's powers and she disappears. At first I thought maybe this was Nixley using magic and stole Esme away, but again, that wouldn't make sense because she doesn't know who Esme is. I don't even think she knows necessarily who Alex is, so there would be no link there, but it turns out she was just mimicking Jean's powers, and so she managed to, like, phase herself out and, like, disappear, basically. I don't know where exactly she went, but it seems like Jean was just able to pull her out. And so, yeah, her new room is awesome. It has, like, a nice mural on the wall. I think it's very, very good for a kid. And... At this point, we go over to Nixley, who is annoyed by William's article. She compares Supergirl to her father and the way that they've been acting and have sort of reacted against her. And so it's funny that Nixley is annoyed by William's article because really she's just like a villain. She's an alien. She shouldn't really care about what the citizens of National City are saying or thinking about her. However, it's been emphasized that it is an important thing and the free press and putting out articles about what's happening should help Team Supergirl in a way, and it seems like it has, but it didn't actually come to any, like, big conclusion this episode in regards to what William's article did, because we didn't get to see the perspective of the actual people of National City, apart from Nixley slightly getting annoyed at the start of the episode. And so talking about Nixley, she is after the Hope Totem, and she is now wielding a totem in her gauntlet, and at this point, it's pretty much confirmed with her going after the Hope Totem that we weren't going to be seeing Dreamer in this episode. Because if you remember how the episode before ended off, Dreamer mentioned that she wants to go after the Dream Totem, and she's probably doing that off screen. I did think that they would probably follow that up in this episode, but it seems like this is something that's going to be happening probably in the episode afterwards. And so then we go back to Alex and Kelly, and Alex is very worried about being a mother. And they have lots of tools throughout this episode. And at this point, Esme actually comes to visit the tower and she meets everyone. She meets Brainy, who she thinks is very funny, which is true because I laughed a couple of times. He was like, have you been training in hand-to-hand -hand combat? I mean, she's literally like six or seven or something like that. So definitely not Brainy, definitely not. But that was a bit of good fun. And Alex and John, they fight Nixley at The Hague. So they go over to Holland for a minute and they fail to stop them and basically we find out where the totem is, it's in this kind of statue of a flower that was significant in the past, like all these other totems are sort of symbols of the power that they hold and so Kara and Nixley both try and tap into it and find out what they actually have to do in order to acquire the totem and sort of best each other like they've been doing these last couple of episodes and so apparently the hope totem in order to get it, she must inspire a lasting hope. And so throughout this episode, they need to figure out how on earth are they supposed to inspire that much hope in the world. And back over at The Hague, the world leaders around the world are going crazy. This is because of the totem firing off and it's messed up them 
once again like it happened in the last couple of episodes of people in the surrounding blast radius going crazy and it just so happens that this was at an important place and there was lots of world leaders from like Porto Martis and different places around the world that are sort of fictionalized places in the DC universe in the Arrowverse as a whole as well I guess and so at this point a great moment happens when we go back to the tower and so Supergirl's identity is revealed and this is by Esme who says you're the same person aren't you when meeting Supergirl for the first time but also having met Kara before obviously she can tell the powers are the same between the two of them and she sort of sums it up and she screams out loud and they get all scared and they're like okay so this is great Esme but you can't really go around screaming out that Kara is Supergirl because it is a secret identity and so at this point they try and train her and Kara explains Kryptonian powers and how it works and there was a great line about how heat vision comes in very handy when you want to make a good cup of hot chocolate and it was just like a great line I think Kara would be a great aunt if we get to see more of this throughout the rest of the season and so Esme uses Supergirl's powers it goes kind of wrong because it seems like Alex is pushing Esme way too hard and so Supergirl is sort of left in the middle of all of this and at the same time she's trying to figure out how do I inspire hope can I do it through Esme maybe will I be successful in you know getting the hope totem if I can go around the world help all these different people and it doesn't seem like it's going to be as easy as that and so Supergirl hears Nixley at this point laughing about something and Lena then suggests to inspire hope by being Kara the journalist rather than being a superhero so spreading the word in a good way spreading good news rather than bad news like Catco is doing all the time and that's emphasized very much so when Nixley comes to William at Catco she kidnaps him and Dre gets blasted across the room by Nixley which was very satisfying might I add because she's just very one note and like this sort of villainous character who is just like Okay, so report on the clickbait stuff, report on the bad stuff, and I don't give a crap about any of the other stuff. And in this moment, Andrea says one line that annoyed me so much, and that's the line she talks about like, Oh, let's film this. When, in fact, human lives are in danger, William is literally being held captive by her. Supergirl comes in, she gets hit by her magic, she is halted in her place, and then only when she gets hit is she grateful that like you know Supergirl was there to save her in the first place and nothing bad went down so Andrea really has to sort of go back and realize oh I'm a terrible person like I've been doing this all wrong I'm only caring about making money I don't care about human lives and that was really really nailed in during the scene and so Alex and Kelly they talk about everything and they realize that they need to find a way to show Esme that they truly mean to be great parents and that they are not gonna just throw her away like all these other people who have been looking after her since she was orphaned. And so why does Nixley care about the press? This is something that I mentioned earlier and I wanted to just briefly talk about because I think some of you guys might be interested. She even says something along the lines of, if you think your little newspaper has any impact you're delusional. Well Nixley I think you're the crazy one because that is a complete contrast to what you're trying to say. And I think this might be the writers actually slipping up in this case because it doesn't make sense if she's saying William's actions are small and they make no difference then why on earth did you kidnap William in the first place? Like what difference does that make by kidnapping him? It's just showing that you're salty about the newspaper article we put out so obviously it's going to make some sort of impact otherwise why on earth would you kidnap him in the first place? So I don't know if that is some sort of mistake that they included that line because I mean it's pretty obvious she was going to say something in the lines of oh what you're doing doesn't make an impact at all just by publishing a newspaper it doesn't matter to me because I'm a super villain so yeah that's just something that I wanted to bring up and I think it's very important that we uh, do talk about so if you have any opinions on that let me know in the comments down below and so Nixley reveals that she thinks she's delivering justice which has been pretty obvious from the start to be honest because I feel like she's definitely not a full-on villain, she has something with inside of her that makes her at least a little bit compassionate or it was emphasized in the previous episode where the compassion went through her and I think she has some of that still with inside of herself despite doing all of these villainous acts and obviously she's killing people, she's hurting people, she's stealing stuff, it's pretty much everything that makes a villain 
but at the end of the day, I don't think she is like the most dangerous villain that Supergirl has ever faced, and they're definitely overemphasizing how dangerous she is. Obviously, if she gets the totem, she's going to be very dangerous, and that will be scary, so I get why Team Supergirl are so desperate to stop her, but without the totems, I mean, Supergirl and the team can counteract her, especially now that Lena has magical powers. Talking about Lena, she didn't do that much in this episode. She had the one incantation when Supergirl went to confront Nixley to get William back, and that was pretty much it. So, Team Supergirl has the three totems by the end of the episode. Nixley has none of them, so it's a big win for Team Supergirl. And at this point, Supergirl reveals that she wants to destroy the totems. Obviously, there's going to be some sort of backlash to that, and they discuss that just afterwards, because there is definitely no easy way to destroy all of them. And so, by stopping and destroying the totems, or it's going to release all of that energy and take away a lot of that energy from around the world, because I think the concept is that all these feelings are something that everyone has with inside of them, but by using the totem, they're sort of emphasizing those specific feelings and taking away some, and that's what's making people go so crazy around National City. And so they come to the conclusion that they're going to destroy just one of the totems, so that basically there is going to be no way that Nixley is going to have all of the totems. And I think this is actually a good story step for them, because this means that they're going to probably stop going after all of the totems, because at the end of the episode, Supergirl throws the Hope totem into the sun, supposedly destroying it. And so, basically what happens when they destroy the Hope Totem and their sort of reason for actually going ahead and destroying that one is that they've seen that they can inspire Hope without the help of the Totem, so there is definitely a chance for the world to continue as it is and still be hopeful, especially with Supergirl around. And so, it's great to see that last scene when Supergirl throws the Hope Totem into the sun and Nixley realizes that it's been destroyed, she realizes her plans have essentially changed and she needs to do something different, and just at this moment, something great happens at the ending of the episode. A magical package opens up from a portal in her ship, and it's from a secret admirer. Now I have my ideas instantly who it was, especially because of the behind the scenes photos we've been seeing when they were shooting the last couple of episodes, and it turns out it's Lex Luthor, of course. And basically she gets this watch, she taps the watch, and a Lexo suit goes around her, and basically it seems like what they're setting up is, Nixie is going to be like a full-on villain, and she's going to be fighting physically Team Supergirl, rather than going around and going after all the totems, because now one of the totems is destroyed, as I mentioned, that means she can't have all the different totems, so I think they're segueing away from that story, for the end of the season, so it's not just repetitive, because basically it would have been like the next couple of episodes, we only have five episodes left of the whole season, of the whole series as a whole, so if it was five more episodes, then going after five more totems is going to be the same old thing every single week, but now doing this, you're going to get more of a physical threat, because she's got the Lexo suit, and she's going to have Lex's help as well as we head towards the end of the season, so it's going to be very interesting when he actually shows up. But that's about it for this video guys, thank you guys so much for watching, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe so you don't miss any videos. Also turn on notifications, and you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching, stay tuned, I'll have another video out tomorrow. Also live stream is going to be on Friday, so that's about it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, I'll catch you guys later, goodbye.